Hi, I'm Mia from the Dog Spotters, and today we are here interviewing the director of the documentary Blueberry Dreams, Elena Mikhailovica. Welcome to the MDVK, and thank you for taking your time for this. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> uh, your documentary Blueberry Dreams followed a family in Georgia. They decided to start a business by growing blueberries, but we were confronted with a lot of difficulties. So firstly, how did you discover this particular family and how did you decide to make a documentary film about them? Okay. So first my idea was to shoot my cousins who live in uh, Abkhazia. It's a breakaway region in Georgia. It's controlled by Russia and you cannot access. So I could never get a pass to see them. Uh, we are separated by checkpoints and half of my family lives there. And I was very sad. So I decided to observe the separation line and to meet a lot of kids and to understand how they feel about the border, the checkpoints, etc. And one night, it was COVID, all the hotels were closed and one family was renting one <laughs> floor. And so we went there and then I met them, uh, the two kids. One was in the tree saying, hi, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, okay, let's meet, let's be friends. And we spent one day, then the dad came in his uh, pink outfit and uh, he said I bought a land and I I'm gonna make uh, blueberries and then I was oh that's interesting I would stay one day and then two days and then two years <laughs> at the end yeah that's sweet okay and um, while we watched the film uh, we felt an intimate emotional connection with the family and we want to know how did you manage to catch those very intimate family moments um, it took some time because, and the most important uh, in any documentary, I think, is the time uh, without the camera. You know, you have to come and you have to also open up yourself. I was telling this to the audience yesterday that um, if you want them to tell you their story, you have to also tell them your story. And you have to spend time, eat with them, uh, do activities with them, go to the farm with them. You have to give yourself. To, the, to these people. And then little by little we decided to, all together that we're going to make a film. And also the dad, he's not old but he's 67 and for that age having those kids it's a big gap. And he was uh, scared that he will leave the world soon because he had three heart attacks during the shooting. It was awful, it was very stressful and he said this film is like a testament. I'm leaving something for my kids. So it was a common decision so it's not my film it's our film I always say this with the family yeah was it sometimes hard to keep an emotional distance uh, regarding the seemingly unsolvable situation of the family it was awful <laughs> yes because uh, sometimes um, I don't want to enter this uh, personal things but sometimes there's no money there's no food there is uh, war coming and everybody is scared and of course you want to take the kids and save the world but it's not possible also and you have to just uh, stay quiet and do your job and of course when the father was sick we took out the cameras and we um, made activities with kids so i took them for um, easter like um, egg chase or something like this to the sea to the river so they just uh, have good time and no film and that was very important for me yeah because this is the most important film comes after all this yeah if you will make films later just think about the protagonist first always and then you will have maybe a beautiful film that's beautiful to hear <laughs> and how's the family today do you know that of course we are in contact now they are like my family these boys they are my brothers and that's forever and um, uh, the, the film seems um, very bright, etc., but it's not the case because this program, Plan the Future, is for four years. Uh, you don't pay the credit, you just pay the percentage and then you have to pay back the loan. But it's impossible for this kind of farms and this kind of farmers who have no clue about business. They have one day training. For this whole thing, just one day training. And the loan is huge, they mortgaged everything. So. At the end, next year, I don't know if they will lose everything. So with my producer, we decided to apply for a platform called ShareDoc. It's when your documentary has a focus on your protagonist and people can help, uh, can donate or also they can help at the farm. That's, it's not only about money, it's if you have free time, you can go, if you have a tractor you don't need, you can give to them. So it's called Share Dog and you can search Blueberry Dreams. And with this I'm trying to help the family. 
And also I'm trying to take the kids sometimes to Europe to make them see things and I will help with their studies. But what more can I do? I don't know yet. I'm thinking. <laughs> wow, this is so nice of you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Um, throughout the documentary, the family fears an approaching war with Russia. And in addition to that, there has emerged a very tense political situation in Georgia because the election has probably been manipulated. How did you see the role of art, culture and especially your work in such terrible times? Um, you know, uh, when I started the film, it was pandemic. I, we did not expect the war. And when the war started, this place, uh, especially this region, is at the separation line with the breakaway region. There is a frozen conflict, there is Russian border guards. So especially there, it was fear was like, you can feel it, it was awful. And every day in the kitchen, neighbors would gather, look at the TV and think about what we're going to do. And also the oldest son was born during the war. And there was no hospital because it was bombed. So people were so stressed that it will come back. And I wanted to finish the film before the election. It was very important to me to, to show it because I wanted my government to give me answers about this program, why he did this. He knew that there will be too much farmers, uh, that they have no clue about farming, too much blueberries to sell, no possibilities to sell to Europe, no possibility to do anything, and that these people will lose their home. So it was a mess with, between the government, the banks, Russia, etc. because they all decide the fate of little families. So that was, for me, all connected. And my work, I studied politics and I knew that my films would be political a bit. But I also like movies, so I wanted to make it pretty somehow and also for the kids to have a beautiful memory. So I worked a lot on aesthetic, but sometimes it doesn't work. Like the kitchen scene, it was hard to film, it's little but it's the only place where there is a heating system, so people will always be in the kitchen. So yeah, it was complicated to mix everything. And also for me, because my family lives there, so I was scared for them in this region that is controlled by Russia. So it was a mixed feeling. And uh, I think with this film, I also wanted to try to understand how I was when I was a kid, because the war started when I was uh, four and five and then my family comes from both sides of the conflict so i was always tortured which which side you know and then i left georgia i went to belgium for 25 years and i was oh it's not my country i have to go back so i decided to go back learn georgian and understand what's going on so it's also a personal film a bit about childhood growing and no, not knowing in which country you are not understanding it to conclude, we want to ask you, what message do you want to bring across with Blueberry Dreams? I think the first most important message is a film about love. Love between uh, parents to their children, a dad towards his land, towards his animals. And uh, yeah, respect. Uh, what I like in this family that the kids, they are free to feel, free to think. In Georgia, it's really rare because the little boy, he can have long hair, he can wear rings. He can cry and it's okay, he's still a boy and nobody is judging him for doing what he wants. And they have a say in politics also, they listen, parents listen to them. So I think it's a, an example of a family. Of course there, there is bad days, bad moods, it's normal. But for Georgia I wanted this to say it's a film about family that loves each other very much. And about a dad who has a dream, um, make uh, his kids future beautiful. And he's very romantic, so what is better than a, I don't know, blueberry field, I don't know. So I would say it's film about love, yeah. Thank you very, very much for this interview okay. and thank you for taking your time again. Yes, it's thank you. nice thank to you. hear all about this. Um, thank you for watching and um, you can find all of this on our blog.